In recent years, the world of technology has been captivated by a groundbreaking development, which is generative AI. You've probably seen headlines all across the internet, with McKinsey even reporting 2023 being the year of generative AI. With all the news coming out of generative AI's capability and its economic potential, in this video, I'll dive into everything you need to know about it and help you understand what all of this hype is really about. But before I do so, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel to continue learning the building blocks for this age of AI. So looking at the brief history of Gen AI, Gen AI overall refers to AI algorithms designed to generate new data outputs, be it text, images, or sounds, based on extensive data sets that they were trained upon. It can be traced back to the 1960s with early chatbots, and its real momentum began in the introduction of Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs, in 2014. Looking at the brief history of generative AI and AI as a whole, you can see that in the 1950s and 1960s, early AI research was done, with a focus on basic neural networks and the idea of machines simulating human behavior. Then around 1980s, there was an emergence of machine learning with AI beginning to learn from data. And then in the 1990s, there was a development of more sophisticated neural networks and the concept of deep learning. By the 2000s, there was advancements in computational power and a lot more data being available which then paved the way for more complex AI models. By 2012, deep learning research went a bit further with advancements in computer vision, speech recognition, and natural language processing. AlexNet, a convolutional neural network developed by Alex Krzyzewski, was the first to break 75% in identifying images from a 14 million image database. Then by 2014, there was the introduction of the Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs which was invented by Ian Goodfell. This marked a significant milestone in generative AI. By 2015, diffusion models were introduced, and these were important to note because they were able to learn how to generate actual images from noise. This was also the same year where Google's Deep Dream model for image generation was launched, and OpenAI was founded. Then by 2022, ChatGPT was released by OpenAI. Then by 2023, last year, Google announced Google Bard and served as another player in the generative AI space. So all of these innovations led to the current landscape of generative AI. The evolution of language models like GPT and BRT has further propelled this field, enhancing the AI's capability to understand and generate human-like text. So now the history is great to know, but how does generative AI actually work? So at the core of Gen AI are advanced machine learning models, primarily what I mentioned earlier, generative adversarial networks or GANs, as well as transformers. GANs consist of two parts a generator that creates new data, and a discriminator that evaluates this data against the real data. This dynamic process leads to the generation of highly realistic output. On the other hand, transformers used in language models like GPT analyze vast text data to understand language patterns and context, and it enables the AI to generate coherent and contextually relevant text. So both GANs and transformers rely on large datasets for training, which allows them to then produce new original output that's often indistinguishable from human-generated content. So this interplay between GANs and transformers is the mechanism at the heart of generative AI's ability. But to wrap it all up simply, imagine generative AI like a kind of smart robot that can make new things. It's like having a robot artist and a robot judge within it. Now the artistic robot tries to make pictures or stories and the judging robot decides if they're good or not. These two robotic functions keep practicing together until the artistic robot gets really good at making things that seem real. It's like playing a game where they keep getting better by learning from each other. So now that you know how generative AI works, how is it applied in the real world? Well, the prevalence of Gen AI in the real world has definitely grown in the past year. Besides the obvious ChatGPT and Google Bard, which illustrate the practical utility of generative AI, there's also so many other tools which we cover in this channel that help to produce video, audio, and everything else. For example, when it comes to art and creativity, tools like DALI, Midjourney, and other image generators, which I've covered in other video, have revolutionized artistic expression by enabling creation of different artwork. This has definitely opened up new avenues for artists and non-artists alike to explore their digital creativity. And then there's customer service. AI-driven chatbots, which are enhanced by these generative AI models, are now capable of providing more nuanced and context-aware responses, greatly enhancing customer interaction. And then, of course, education and learning. Generative AI models are being used to develop educational content, including personalized learning materials and interactive educational experiences. AI's ability to analyze vast datasets and generate new molecular structures 
is aiding in faster drug discovery and personalized medicine. So all of these actual applications are happening right now, and they're highlighting GenAI's transformative impact across the industries. But despite all of these impressive capabilities, GenAI is still new and is developing. I mean, it's really only been around for a couple of years. So with that, there are several challenges that it still holds. For one, there's the whole accuracy and reliability factor. Early models have struggled with producing consistently accurate and realistic outputs, so there reveals a gap that needs to be bridged. This is evident from what is called hallucinations in the output, where generative AI platforms like ChatGPT are putting out results that are not accurate in their information. Then there's also bias in AI. Data, after all, is cleaned and collected by humans. And depending on the analyst, the data that is fed to the AI may be rife with biases. And then of course, there's a spread of misinformation. The ability of generative AI to produce realistic yet fabricated content poses significant risks in the spread of misinformation. Despite its capabilities, Gen AI has already been boosting the spread of disinformation and propaganda. And then plagiarism and creative rights is another issue. The ease with which Gen AI can replicate artistic and literary works also leads to complex issues regarding intellectual property and the definition of originality in this digital age. So the line of what is real authentic art is going to be harder to distinguish as time goes on. And then of course, there is a constant worry that as Gen AI becomes more capable, there are concerns it will impact employment. In fact, there are plenty of reports stating that 40% of workforce will need to reskill in response to AI. So all of these challenges demonstrate that not everything is sunshine and rainbows. It's an added reminder that we need to ensure that Gen AI can be utilized safely and responsibly. We need to have careful consideration of all of the ethical frameworks and regulatory measures that are required to ensure that the advancements in Gen AI are aligned with our overall social values and norms. So looking ahead, what is the future of AI coming to? Well, it does look rather promising. In fact, the market size is aimed to hit $118 billion by 2032. According to Gartner, generative AI is going to hit it big on enterprises over the next five years, predicting that 40% of enterprise applications will have conversational Gen AI embedded into it by 2024. And to take it further in the same report, by 2025, 30% of enterprises will have implemented an AI augmented development and testing strategy. And by 2026, generative design AI will automate 60% of the design effort for new websites and mobile apps. And by 2027, nearly 15% of new applications will automatically be generated by AI without humans in the loop. So continuous improvements in AI models are expected to enhance accuracy, creativity, and applicability across all of these domains. And as the technology matures, we can anticipate its expansion into different fields, further transforming our world. So overall, the economic potential is huge, reaching trillions. Whatever the case may be, it's important to stay updated with what Gen AI can do. So if you want to know the future trends of generative AI in the coming year and beyond, make sure to check out the next video and subscribe to this channel if you want to join the journey on navigating through this digital ocean of AI together.